Our top focus. When scientists observed a three-mile-long crack in the Larsen ice shelf three years ago, they expected a large iceberg to split from it and float away. But what they had not expected was that this split would happen in a span of less than three years, somewhere between Monday and Wednesday. An iceberg measuring around 6,000 square kilometers and weighing over one trillion ton drifted into the open sea. While scientists say that it is difficult to pinpoint an exact reason behind the split, climate change is being seen as one of the catalysts which could be behind this massive glacological event. Scientists say that there is no reason to believe that it would have not happened without extra warming that human activity may have caused. Another school of thought, though, believes that the split could be linked to the natural life cycle of the iceberg. To understand what happened in the Antarctica, Here's a quick report. The world's polar ice caps are shrinking little by little. The Arctic is heating up twice as fast as the rest of the planet, with Greenland's glaciers receding particularly quickly. This process is speeding up all by itself. Melting snow exposes ice underneath, which then absorbs the sun's rays and increases thawing. At the opposite end of the Earth, 90% of the ice shelves on the Antarctic Peninsula are starting to disintegrate. Ice melt is also being observed in mountain ranges like the Himalayas, Kilimanjaro, the Alps and Pyrenees. In the Andes, glaciers are retreating and risks disappearing altogether. Ocean levels are rising due to the combination of melting ice and warmer sea temperatures as warm water has a greater volume than cold water. At the current rate, it's predicted that by 2100, sea levels will rise between 26 centimetres and a metre. Islands in the Pacific or Indian Oceans like the Maldives will be submerged. Densely populated low-lying coastal areas like Bangladesh, Vietnam, the Netherlands and the east coast of the United States are all under threat. Well, now experts claim that while the melting of the iceberg itself will not impact sea levels because it was already floating on the surface of the sea, displacing water equivalent to its mass. So as and when the iceberg melts, it will not lead to a rise in the levels of the sea. Experts caution that the glaciers behind it are the bigger problem. Scientists say the size of the iceberg is lesser of an issue because carving of an iceberg is not a new phenomenon. Carving has a minimal direct effect on sea level. Experts also point out that the large chunk of ice mass floating in Antarctica is not a new development, but the freely floating element is. In fact, a Bloomberg report states, although ice shells already do float on open water, icebergs that are created as a result of it don't affect global sea levels, which are reported to be rising at approximately 3.4 millimeters annually. The report further states that warmer water usually takes up a bigger volume than similar amount of cold water. This contributes to the expansion. Although the gigantic Antarctica ice sheet will eventually melt into water and warm over a period of time, the report says it will not necessarily have a significant effect on overall heating of the world's oceans, cautioning that glaciers pouring water into the oceans are of greater concern. Well, the Antarctic contains an awful lot of ice, and if um, large glaciers do end up flowing faster into the sea and dumping more ice into the ocean, then it will raise sea level. If you look at all the ice in Antarctica, you're talking about many meters of sea level rise potential. But we're not talking tomorrow, um, we're not talking next year. It'll It'll be a process that will take time, uh, but we think that in places that process has started. What are the driving forces? Uh, so it is river flooding, sea level rise, extreme heat, extreme precipitation, crop yield decrease, tropical storms. By the way, the tropical cyclones will not become more frequent with global warming, but they will intensify. So you will have probably even less typhoons on the category 2 and 3, but you will have more on the category 4 and 5, uh, which are really destructive. 
Now, with an eventual rise in sea levels, there's a huge risk of India being impacted because of its long and densely populated coastline. In 2016, a United Nations report said that nearly 40 million Indians will be at risk from rising sea levels by the year 2050, with people in Mumbai and Kolkata specifically having the maximum exposure to coastal flooding in future due to rapid urbanization and economic growth. In 2013, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, estimated an increase in sea level of somewhere between 30 centimeter and 100 centimeters by the year 2100 but more recent research has suggested the great ice caps are more vulnerable than expected in a warming world and that ocean levels could rise more rapidly to reach 200 to 300 centimeters by the end of the century India has already started seeing effects of sea level rise in places such as the Sundarbans and Majoli one of the largest riverine islands in the world Further rise in sea level may also lead to economic loss of coastal communities and spark inland migration. And regarding this, we spoke to Akshay Heblikar, who is an environmental activist based out of Bengaluru. Here's what he had to say. This, which is now going to be called as A68, is uh, going to have tremendous impact though may not be uh, in the immediate future, but it is definitely going to have a, a very large you know, impact on all the countries across the world. It is not just uh, in Europe, it may not just be in the Atlantic, but it is definitely going to impact a lot of uh, other countries. And it is definitely going to impact uh, India, especially the vast coastline that we have right from Gujarat up to Kanyakumari and then the east coast right up to the uh, uh, West Bengal and here uh, the peninsular India is going to be uh, definitely affected a lot because most of the population in India I think as of now the peninsular India the coastal population is uh, tremendous in addition to affecting the marine uh, biodiversity you know, because th th this is going to have a huge impact because there has to be a healthy mix of fresh water and salt water for the marine biodiversity to thrive but due to the antarctica ice uh, were melting you know, what would happen is completely disastrous in addition to this there is going to, there is going to be a lot of migration that is going to take place into the inland in addition to the change in the uh, atmospheric temperature. It is also going to impact a lot of uh, the natural cycles. For example, the water cycle, the overall hydrological cycle, you know, it is going to impact. And this definitely is going to uh, increase the pace of climate change that we're talking about. The iceberg has Know, drifted away I mean it has broken down so it is certainly going to start melting sooner or later but uh, in terms of the amount of time that we have we ha I can say we hardly have any time the sooner the better in fact we should have done this almost about 25 or 30 years ago I mean the measures that we must have taken should have been in place almost about 25 30 years ago at least but anyway uh, now that we are in this situation I feel if we really need to arrest this kind of a situation from happening in future now this has happened but then if we have to stop such uh, things from happening in future I think we'll have to we don't really have much time say about five years ten years at the most well one thing's clear after hearing uh, out Akshay over there is that there is a clear and eminent uh, level of threat uh, that one can see, maybe not now in the immediate future, but in the years to come. To get a better understanding of how India could be impacted, let me go across to my colleague uh, Mohammed Saleh on this. Saleh, uh, could you help us understand how the melting of these ice caps is going to eventually impact you and me? Absolutely, Sanana. This, of course, is a very important, significant event. A lot of people have been laughing off saying that, look, global warming is, is nothing that we need to worry about. Now, what has happened is very significant. We were aware of the fact that this ice shelf was cracking up. So this is a huge uh, bit of a shelf that is cracked off. And this iceberg, which is now floated into the uh, Arctic, uh, will, of course, 
raise the sea levels. We don't quite know by how much, but we are looking at, you know, by the next few decades. The impact of it will not be evident immediately. The impact of this monumental event, which has taken place, will be felt over the course of the next few decades. Now, India, let's, let's take a look at this map. It has got a huge amount of coastline. We've got 7,500 kilometers of coastline with a large amount of population along its coast. We've got three of our metros, Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata, where, where dense amount of population actually resides. And what could potentially happen? Because we expect that by the year 2100, the sea levels would rise by as much as one meter. So we're looking at the sea actually coming into the land to a fairly a substantial portion of it will be submerged along these lines. Um, this, of course, will lead to a host of problems fundamentally about migration, loss of this extremely fertile land. Because if you look at this region that we are talking about here, uh, this is an extremely fertile bit of land where a lot of paddy is grown. So we're looking at loss of agricultural land. We're looking at a loss of um, you know, people who would have to migrate to other areas into the hinterland, creating a huge amount of pressure on this land within which which is away from the sea uh, in terms of the number of people that it will have to accommodate and also in terms of the agricultural produce that it will have to come up with so this so now, you know uh, although some people may say look it is not something that's going to impact us today or tomorrow or probably even the next decade the fact of the matter is in the next 70 80 years this is an event that will have a telling impact on how India's coastline would actually look like. Now, scientists have come up with projections to show as to what uh, the coastline would look like, and it is a little scary. And it's not just Indian coastlines which will be affected, but this is something that's going to happen across the world. And every time you hear of a big chunk of ice which breaks off from the Arctic or the Antarctic, uh, you know, this is, of course, something which should worry every one of us who inhabits planet Earth. And also, let's, let's uh, take a look at what some of the people in the major metro cities have had to say uh, on this impending crisis which will happen not, not today, tomorrow, but probably in a hundred years' time from now. How do people in Mumbai feel about the fact that you know, the city of Mumbai could get submerged by the year 20, 2100? Let's listen in to what some of the people have to say there. Um, over the years, we have seen that uh, you know, uh, being in the coastal area, um, we have had issues with uh, not uh, saving our mangroves, not taking care of them, where we had the uh, deluge that happened in 2005. Uh, the Mumbai was in a, in a, in a great deal of uh, bad shape. Um, I think we might repeat that again, uh, that sort of situation again, if we don't keep our city clean. Um, now you have, uh, you know, your dry waste, wet waste, segregation of that. I mean, that's the basic thing you could start with. I, I see a lot of people wasting water, so you have to stop them from, you know, even even at home when your maids are, uh, you know, using water, running water uh, in an hour for 40 minutes at a go, you have to ask them to stop doing that. So you, you have to do your bit of contribution to it. We are living in Mumbai and we are making trouble for Mother Nature and we are using AC and, and everything like global warming and uh, pollution so it is a very high time for us. We should take a, uh, we, to, we should take a prevention and also think for our future generation. Like uh, if we are using the uh, non-renewable source of energy too much, then one day will the mother nature will not able to uh, to forgive uh, forgive us. And we should we should we should uh, we should uh, uh, keep consume things uh, in a in a in a limited manner. Like we are using uh, everything in excessive. Uh, petrol and diesel so it, it will harming the global uh, it will causing the global warming and uh, i think uh, it is a time we should think uh, for our mother also and uh, it's a request everyone should use a renew, no, uh, renewable source of energy at that point of time i think government will take many safety measures like uh, if you see in 2005 26 july that there was flood around in all over mumbai so lakhs of people were stuck up in some places so looking to the such things, government will take uh, many safety measures for that. So I don't think that, that Mumbai will get round up. 
Well, clearly, this is a warning, a one trillion ton warning for everybody in the world. We will be uh, keeping a very close eye on all these developments as far as environment issues are concerned here at We On Time for us to take a very short break. More news and updates follow on the other side. We talk about China's foray into Nepal, providing it with high-speed internet and what it means for India. Stay with us. We'll be right back.